there's a demand for extended stays and those who win the game aim for hospitality industry. So definitely move on over to make a higher profit serving essential workers. And I think you'll have a really profitable career and you won't need so many rentals either because they'll be cash flowing so well. This episode brought to you by Suites at Madison. Meeting in conference rooms for rent by the hour, week, month, or year. Suites at Madison, where business gets done. Check them out at www.downtowntampaoffice.com. Now, on to the show. You are listening to the Invest Florida Real Estate Show, covering topics in lending, buy and sell strategies, property management, hot markets, and tips and tools to guide you along the way on your path to real estate success. You want Florida investment real estate talk? You have come to the right place. And now, our hosts, Eric Odom and Stephen Silverman. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Invest Florida Real Estate Show. This is your co-host, Eric Odom, along with Stephen Silverman. Stephen, holiday season is upon us. It's uh, We're in the thick of it right now, and uh, we've got all sorts of stuff going on with uh, another election cycle and uh, and and another strain of uh, COVID. This is well, probably never going to go away. And well, uh, you know, we're we're brokers, and and being a broker at the best of times it's challenging. But we've got so many new things going on simultaneously in the market now. We've got new strains of the the COVID virus. We have conversations about an infrastructure bill, but nobody knows really what's going to happen. Um, there's talk about taxes changing and capital gains. And again, nobody really knows what's going to happen. And at the same time, our uh, inflation figures are running really high. So um, we have some investors running for the hills and others diving right in. It's a, a lot of different opinions right now. Well, certainly this infrastructure bill that uh, is going to be coming into effect here in the near term is going to be very impactful on the state of Florida because we're going to be targeted for a lot of the additional uh, construction for infrastructure, particularly in the road area. We're already seeing it now, even though the bill's not uh, really working its way through the system yet. I'm looking for two separate groups that are in the process of helping to build roads. And we have a labor shortage here in the state of Florida. They're having to import folks from out of out of the area. And we wanted to have somebody to come on and talk about how to capture that opportunity in the real estate market. I think we've got a great guy today that's going to be talking about these little bit longer stay rentals, but not your traditional rental. There's an opportunity to earn a little bit more than you can off a traditional rental, maybe a little bit less than your overnight Airbnb, but there's a lot of benefits to going after these extended stay type of folks that are going to be working on a road project, for example, for you know, six months or a military person that's going to be stationed at, at Homestead or up in the Panhandle or, or in uh, Jacksonville for a year on a, on a, on assignment. Stephen, one of the best ways for folks to help us out with the show is to give us some reviews. And for us, for our show, which we've been doing for, for many years now, uh, but it, we try to get really good guests and your reviews help. If you go on to any site where you can give us a review, that's what our guests read. And that's how we're able to attract good guests. Like we've got a great guest today. Yeah, we've got a great guest today. If you've not done so, we really would appreciate the time uh, to just go ahead and leave us a review. We don't monetize this podcast. We don't uh, do commercials. It's a bit of a labor of love, but you certainly can help us by going on and giving us a review because it makes it much easier for us to try to find guests who want to invest their time when they see that our listener base is robust and, and care and that it's the type of folks that they're, they want to talk to and attract and help them do business. Stephen, anything else before we go on to our guest? Let's move right on into the guest. Today we have with us Al Williamson. Al is the owner of Leading Landlord. Al is a professional engineer, full-time real estate investor, and the author of several real estate books. He began investing in 1996. He is best known for publicly documenting his quest to create enough secondary income streams to cover the first mortgage on his eight-unit apartment building, which he accomplished in 2015. Al is a proud family man and spends his days managing his corporate housing company and helping others reach their financial goals in extended stay rentals. Al, welcome to the Invest Florida show. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. 
Al, I really appreciate the time that you're investing with us today. You know, we're a Florida show and you're in California, but I think you have such an interesting story about it's a different spin really on extended Airbnb rentals that I thought it'd really be valuable to have you on the show to talk about a little bit. Some of this I've actually been involved with myself. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested to know how you got involved. Let's back up first from the beginning, how you got into real estate and why. Well, I, I got married. That's how I got involved. And, and just before I, I got married, a. Uh, uh, that, that just that means you've got any expenses, but it doesn't really mean, <laughs> mean <right>. real estate. <laughs> <laughs> At a church picnic, a guy um, told me, he, he, he sat me down, he said, y- you know, instead of buying a house, you should think about buying a duplex, and, and uh, you and Monique live on one side and rent off the other. He, he said uh, it worked out well for him. He was an older guy. That was back in 96, 1996. I went to the library and just started reading all these real estate books, and as an engineer, all the math came easy to me. I loved it. I loved the algebra part of it. And I, I, I love that uh, forced appreciation. You know, you can do some improvements to your property and increase the value by just increasing the, the net income. I loved all that stuff. So um, that's what I did. I bought a, a three unit Victorian and I squished my new bride into the smallest unit. And, and, and then she couldn't take it anymore after four years. <laughs> <laughs> but that was okay because the the property had quadrupled in value, and uh, she said she knew it all along. She knew it was a good deal all along. <laughs> so. yeah. it actually, it was her idea, right? Yes, it was her yeah. idea all yeah. all along. Yes. Okay, just so we got that straightened out. Yes. So yes. you started out with a duplex, but then you migrated. Why don't you tell us a little bit? how you kind of came up with this idea because you're an extended stay Airbnb for lack of a better description. Right, 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 right. So I was a user of these extended stay hotels, um, like extended stay America, Residence Inn, and um, a number of other national brands, Wyndham. Nearly all the national hospitality brands have an extended stay version. In fact, like one out of every four of their new um buildings that they're going to make are extended stays focusing on um, serving those essential workers and those people in between homes and and uh, people who are, there's just more mobile workforce of people choosing to live one place but work in a completely different place for an extended period of time. So um, these these products that have kitchenettes in them are, are really popular. They, were, they, they held up really, really well during COVID because um, people uh, weren't going to restaurants, they were cooking for themselves, and they were essential workers, Even, like plumbers and iron workers, all those construction workers, um, like Eric, that you that you might be working with, are, are um, essential workers, as well as us engineers. We're essential workers too for infrastructure projects, and as we know, infrastructure is going is a big topic in in 2022. There's going to be a lot more of uh, essential workers and, and construction folks traveling. Um, yeah. Linemen, here in California, where we have all these fires caused by electrical lines, we get linemen, electrical linemen from all over the, the country coming to uh, maintain those lines and um, before before the fire season. And they travel with their families. So again, extended stay uh, housing is, 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 is a, there's more need than there is supply. Yeah, and let's, and let's talk about it in Florida terms because we are, in fact, I'm involved right now in trying to place in offices for two road construction companies that they're bringing folks down because riding roads, putting in additional roads, Florida's growing, it's, it's, it's faster than it really can keep up with. And so they're bringing in people from out, out of state. And so it's not just the office space that we're trying to place with them. It's also all their employees that they're bringing down. They're going to be doing that work. And of course, we have a shortage of tradesmen here in Florida. So they're importing them from outside, outside right. the area. But it's not just the trades and roads. It's 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 nurses that might uh, and doctors that might be coming in in heavy seasons of the of the year during snowbird season. It might be uh, military. As a matter of fact, I, I had an, a couple of my units, Stephen, uh, but this is probably 20 years ago, that we were renting out to officers at the base. That they'd be in right. working on uh, projects over McDill Air Force Base, and we have air, you know we have military bases all over the state of Florida, Homestead and and McDill and Tampa and, and up in the Panhandle. There's several 
And so you've got these folks that are coming in working on projects. And so this is what you're referring to, right, Al? Absolutely. That Those classes are, are absolutely um, what I'm referring to. If we got some other categories for Florida, those people who were displaced by any type of a weather event, hurricane or whatever, displaced, their insurance companies cover their costs for loss of use. So they also need um, extended stay housing. So, Al, just just to circle now, I mean, I understand conceptually it's it's similar to the Airbnb model, but how do your extended stay properties? What's different about them? Oh, that's a great question. So, some some things um, such as the need for a washer and dryer. You know, if you are this there for a couple of days, you can live without a washer and dryer. Yeah, but if you're there for a, two to four months, you know, that's a big deal now. That's a big deal. So you, you, won't, you you're going to be looking for uh, someone who has that. Also trust level. If, if you're going to stay longer periods of time, you're looking for someone more trustworthy and that has um, everything together. I can't put up with nearly anything for a few days, but my wife can't. But uh, on these longer time stays, you just, you just want to work with a more professional person who's who has all your needs met. And also, the amount of density for typical Airbnb that um, you get paid by the person, so to speak. The more people you can cram into your unit, the more the more money you can make. And, and these extended stays um, operators, we like less people in because if we set uh, monthly rates and we just keep it flat and we don't um, worry about the the density, we kind of encourage lower density and and, and lower wear and tear. So, for instance, if 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 you had a property that normally you'd rent out um, in the in the market and it would be two thousand dollars a month, if you were able to market it as extended stay rentals, uh, how much could you get for it? Because at the, you've got to get more, and at the same time you've right. got to, you've got to have more vacancy, so you have to factor that in. Well, let's let me take one of those at a time. So, if, if you're talking about a standard traditional rental that's unfurnished, if if you just furnish the place, you could count on about 30% more than your unfurnished rate. And then if you were just doing, um, flexing your terms and kind of renting, you know, buying by the barrel and selling by the shot and kind of breaking it up so that you can uh, rent uh, two weeks or a month, whatever, you should make three to five times the net income of, of your of your rental and then you can do much more when you go to corporate housing and start um, dealing with um, more C-suite more um, ends. But as a rule of thumb, as a rule of thumb, you should think about aiming for if you own the property, you should aim for about a thousand dollars more on a net income basis for the Florida area per month. Okay, so that's what, that's what you should be looking at. See if that's if that uh, juice is worth the squeeze. Now, regarding vacancies, let's tackle that one, okay? If you are doing these longer-term stays and, and, and you're, you're advertising and marketing like a, like a real company, not, not, not like an Airbnb host, like a hobbyist, but they can do well, okay? But if you're marketing like a real company, online, offline, and those types of things, well, you have, you have 30 days and longer to find a replacement client, okay? So you can keep your 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 vacancies down to one two days by rolling out a a real marketing program so you don't you don't have to have uh, long vacancies that's that's not the case at all that kind of goes to those who are, are not prepared who, who don't really have their reviews everywhere and, and aren't working to get super credibility things like that Let's talk about that marketing. It's how are you finding these uh, corporate housing folks or the essential workers or the military? I suppose they're all different marketing pools, but why don't we talk a little bit about how you go about touching these folks to make sure they know you exist? Right. So that's a long, we're going to need to have a separate conversation for that. That's a long (laughs) one. But let me tell you in general, all those categories are their different audiences. Like military is a completely different audience than people waiting to move into their new homes. So you have to use the right channel for each audience. Does that, that kind of make sense? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Airbnb does get to an audience that's um, that's traveling definitely for short-term stays and even longer-term stays. You can modify your settings for that. But 
uh, you know, home relocators, if, if someone's a relocation company and they're uh, relocating someone from, from California to Florida there, they, they are not looking at Airbnb. They're, they're looking at more traditional sites that, that have furnishings available. They might look at those different websites. They might also call their preferred vendors because that they have a really relationship directly with them. That's what I call the offline leg. And that's where most of the activity is, is offline, uh, direct relationships. I, I bet this is going to surprise you. Um, you need to have a Google presence. <laughs> you need to be found on Google to to play the game so that you don't have vacancies. Just like any company, if, if your furnished rental can't be found on Google, what do you think about that? <laughs> you, you, there's, a, there's a problem with your, with your business model. So I recommend everyone um, take care of that right away. Have your own your own website and and things of that nature. And you got to be found by Google. Ninety five percent of the the traffic on the internet goes through Google. So that's your online. And then of course, let me ask you this. Here's a good question: When you go to Amazon and you look for a product, um, what what do you check? If you have two products exactly the same, two people are selling them, what's the first thing you're going to look for? The reviews. Right. So that's social proof. So the same is important for your for your rental, especially for a longer stage. You got to have social proof. You got to have some type of social media to confirm that you exist and and that you're not not to be a big uh, Kim Kardashian influencer, but more to show people you've been in business for a period of time. Well, so now I'm totally confused because actually it's usually us who ask the questions and, and now you're asking the questions. So it's a nice change. I, f I feel like I'm on jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you know, you're talking about these, a lot of this uh, work is being, or a lot of these folks are being found offline. And if you're getting started in the business, I mean, how do you know who to approach to get in front of them? You know, to make it easy, there's a lot of different tactics but to make it easy if you're just starting I, I recommend that you that you use Airbnb and VRBO as your runway just get your plane off the ground and then once you're in business you can um, especially if you're doing extended stays because you got 30 days and longer to, to to position and make have conversations and to introduce yourself so there's a number of ways of, of um, talking to your local businesses Eric if you guys and you do <laughs> have these extended stay hotels in your area, then you already have people. There's a demand for extended stays. And and um, even if you just drove the parking lot and looked at the logos on the vehicles, you would be closing in on a um, company that you can call their HR department and introduce your product. So there's many different tactics on this. Um, uh, the the ones you, of course you want to get to are the ones that that attract people before they come to your to your town. But if if you need to get people that are in your town, well, it's just driving the parking lots of your local extended stay, and uh, looking at those construction sites and and uh, uh, networking with the uh, uh, like you already Eric uh -huh. you said you already have some construction workers just at letting them know about your capacity. Or I, someone else. I, I can see be. Eric's mind already working. He's going to the extended hotels and he's going to leave notes on all the cars. No, well, 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 no, no I actually I'm recommending the notes. My, uh, I don't recommend those, but, but definitely calling <laughs> calling those logos is definitely um, fair game. But it's not uh, it's not that different from my marketing system I have now, which is basically just following Steve around behind him, like three car links behind him, and then just taking his clients from him yeah. when I figure out who yeah, he is. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the same thing. Pretty much you're right. You're right. <laughs> so, so I have a question. You know, part of the issue that Airbnb is, is having in Florida and other places is the local neighborhoods are... are uh, many of them are against it. Do do the extended stay have the same um, opposition from from the locals? It's com it's it's a completely different type of person. Um, a lot of times, people have objections to the, you know not getting to know their neighbors and and the parties that um, come with it. That's oftentimes objections. But people are not objecting to travel nurses living next to them, and doctors and and other people who are relocating. And it gives them a chance to um, to get to know them since it's not a revolving door. Now, now traveling professionals, let's talk about those essential workers. They come with housing allowances and and even meal allowances, so that they 
they are a complete blessing to the local economy. Um, so mom and pop shops, coffee shops that are nearby and walking distance. And, and their biggest issue of a traveler for extended stays is, is loneliness and trying to com- connect to the community and do what the locals do. So they are great for the economy. They're, they're a completely different category than the short shorter term um, tourist. Now I'm assuming, I mean, this is probably a stupid question, but just tying up some loose ends here that just like Airbnb, it's got to be furnished. It's got to be, it's got to be nice and presentable. I mean, these, you know, it's not, it's not just, you're not just offering a, a two bedroom, one bath house with a washer and dryer. I mean, it has to be more included in it, correct? Right. Absolutely. You want to, you want to go for, if, now these are some strategies to uh, eliminate your vacancies. Okay. You, you want to go for the home away from home feel because that's what people are looking for. They're looking for amenities, looking for that uh, wine opener, all those little things that, that makes it feel lived in, of course. And, and that's what makes people feel happy. And uh, of course, you're a, a professional host and you, and you uh, correspond with them like that. And um, you should do just fine. It, it is a furnished rental. And, and um, it's one of the segments of the furnished rental universe like, like Airbnb happens to be one planet in that whole solar system of, of under the furnished rental galaxy, so to speak. And there's many different um, niches within there in the galaxy, <laughs> so, <laughs> far, far away. <laughs> so, so I would assume that um, what you're really looking for are freestanding single family homes as opposed to uh, multi-unit developments where you know the neighbors are a little bit closer or, or is there a preference can it work in some of those other situations my preference is not, not being in a homeowners association that's my big preference because I, um, they they can change their their minds anytime so it's really hard to run a business inside of a homeowners association but outside of that i want you to think that every house every dwelling apartment has a highest and best use. So just finding the right audience that to maximize your opportunity. For example, a house with a, a fenced in backyard, that's gonna be great for a person relocating that has a pet. That's the they're gonna pay you the most for that spot than than anyone, especially if they have a pit bull or something like that. Oh God. You're gonna be able to make a lot of money because they're gonna have a very difficult time finding housing. And if you have, an, a, say, an apartment um, in a hundred or even an eight unit, like I, I have an eight unit apartment, uh, those are working well. They're still larger than a extended stay hotel room. You know, that's my competition, right? I can offer a lot more value um, at, at a lower price. And that's a pretty compelling proposition. And how are you looking for deals? Uh, um I guess it depends again on the target mod- audience, whether it's military or it's medical or uh, somebody associated with the university or or working on roads. Like, how would you even know where to locate for contractors for roads? I mean, right now we're looking at in a very kind of remote area. I never would have thought in a million years that they, anybody be looking for office there. So it kind of blindsided me when they came and said it's got to be within a mile of this area. So how would you even try to plan for that sort of thing, Al? Well, well, for starting, if if you if you don't know anything about the area, but I'm sh- there's one strategy of you know you want to locate around coffee shops. That's that's a good indicator where people want to gather. But if you know something about this the area, your town, and you want to monetize your knowledge, like you know there's a shovel ready project that's happening, and they're getting ready to build these uh, a whole lot of of houses in this particular area. Um, and then that's where you go. You go to that 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 blue ocean out there, and and locate there the the nearest home for that. Um, so there's there's many different strategies. One thing I always uh, recommend people do, especially if they're purchasing, is to always purchase based on the the rental market's numbers of income, because you do want your, a traditional rental to be your your uh, safety net. If if so, for some reason you wanted to park your extended stay rental business, you want to be able to fall back on the the least profitable thing, which is traditional landlording. So so you got to make sure you purchase with that and with only 
traditional landlording, traditional rental market income in mind. No, I mean that's I mean, that's that's always what I tell my folks is like they're doing Airbnb. I say look for the safety net. What is the investor? What is the what is the traditional annual lease deal going for? And if you're going to stretch, well, you're you're stretching your risk. Um, and and you're you're basically telling the same thing that I tell my folks, which is make sure that you understand where that rental market is on the traditional rental market because that is your safety net. Right, that's your final safety net. When it comes to risk, I'm going to drive you crazy with this, but I I kind of flip it around to see that um, even if even if you have a regular rental and you furnish it, you can make thirty percent more. I think you have more options of how to position that property with some furniture in it than you do unfurnished. So I see it as less risky. And then when you move away and you start adjusting, accept, accepting six months, four months, two months, one month leases, you open yourself to an even wider audience that has even bigger needs. So I would shoot for there. And then if you really want to make some profit so that you can actually maintain your property and, and make a profit, then, then you shoot for the uh, higher end. And if if that doesn't work, it's like shooting for the moon. If you if uh, a more luxurious, higher end places doesn't work for you, then you drop back down to the longer term Airbnbs. And if that doesn't work for you for some reason, then you drop back down. Your safety net is uh, furnished rentals. is a long term furnished rental for people, especially people from international folks want want that. And if that doesn't work, then you drop back down to regular landlording. Um, and there is no safety net under regular landlording. It's just just uh, a world of pain. Um, <laughs> and if that it. doesn't so, work, I mean, <laughs> then, so, then. so regular traditional landlording in my world, as a as a landlord for over twenty five years, is the scariest place on earth for the, to hold my assets in that in that class. That's the highest risk that I could possibly take. Interesting. So, yeah. Al, if people want to learn a little bit more and perhaps contact you, how can they find you? You know, the best way to contact me and, and also to get a free copy of my of my book, which is called 40 Ways to Increase the Net Income of Your Rental Property, is to go to uh, landlordscientist.com. That's, that's where you'll find me. And then you'll uh, be able to contact me, get all my information and uh, find out all about my landlording experiences and experiments on um how to increase your income and reduce your expenses. LandlordScientist.com. That's all awesome, Al. And any final thoughts for either newbies or more experienced folks to getting into this type of uh, rental properties, Al? Yeah, my final thoughts were, hey, you guys are in Florida. And just like when you're playing Monopoly, you, you aim for houses, but then you aim for hotels. You aim to get into the hospitality industry. Those who win the game aim for hospitality industry. So definitely move on over to make a higher profit serving essential workers. And I think you'll have a really profitable career and you won't need so many rentals either because they'll be cash flowing so well. Awesome. Al, really appreciate your time. Uh, Steven, anything else before we let Al go? No, that was uh, fascinating, Al. So we look forward to, I guess we'll come out to Sacramento and, and take a, to an extended stay. <laughs> yes, come on out. I, I got space for you. The, the other thing I'm thinking of as you're talking is like I should like buy a house and then go join the Pitbull Association of America. And then that's the right place to advertise, right? Because Yes, you're absolutely right. You won't have any competition. <laughs> All right, Al. Thank you, sir. And that was Al Williamson talking extended stay rental. Stephen, very valuable information. We had, you know, I was doing that business and didn't even think I was doing that business. I kind of fell into it. But uh, what were your thoughts about Al? I, I thought it was fascinating because he he just took what everybody's doing, but went along a different path and it makes sense if you can leverage your property to make and get more revenue you should do that it's just, airbnb is so big anyway but we all intuitively know there are all these people who are on short-term stays and looking for things and it's great to cater to that market yeah and the, one of the reasons we had him on is because you know he's spoken to a miami rei meeting and um it was fascinating so you know, it was one of those deals where people weren't really talking about it here. And Florida is a massive extended stay. All the snowbirds that come down, they're coming down now to get out of the cold and they'll be here for three or four months. And then you've also got military, the 
infrastructure bill is going to really uh, juice up the need for these types of properties because there's going to be a lot of people coming in to try to service the roads that are going to be built over the next uh, several years. So it's a lot of opportunity here in Florida. We wanted to have somebody come in and talk about that on our show. And Stephen, Al was a great guest. Where can we find other great guests? The right place to go is to our website, www.investfloridashow.com, where you can go through our archives and listen to lots of great guests. Guys, as always, we appreciate the time that you invest with us each and every episode. And until next time, hasta la vista. You've just listened to the Invest Florida podcast with Eric Odom and Stephen Silverman. Join us every week for actionable real estate investment ideas. And of course, visit our website at www.investfloridashow.com for more shows and tips on how to earn a cash flow in the real estate market in Florida. While hosts and producers of the Invest Florida show have no reason to doubt the validity of comments of our guests, we do not warranty their accuracy. Please check with your legal, financial, and tax advisors before entering into any investment. Returns will vary from person to person and deal to deal based on unique circumstances. All information expressed in this show is for educational purposes only. Opinions of the guests are not necessarily shared by the hosts and producers of the Invest Florida Show.